So in this lecture, we'll be learning the concept of force as a vector. Uh, you might have studied this in 12th standard that force is a vector quantity. And we also understand what a vector is. A vector is measurement of a quantity that has both direction and magnitude. Right. So we'll be studying 2D case as well as 3D case. First, starting with 2D case. In this, we'll understand how to represent a force as a vector. Okay. So in 2D case, what is important is a unit vector. A unit vector is a, a vector which is having magnitude equals to 1. And we have defined unit vectors in x direction and y direction. So a unit vector along x direction is called as i cap. Right? It has a magnitude of 1 and its direction is fixed. It is in the x direction. A unit vector along y direction, we call it as j cap. Right? So we'll be using these two to convert our uh, magnitudes into vectors. Consider a force which is inclined uh, with the x-axis at, at a certain angle. So what we can do is we can resolve this force into its two components, fx and fy. Okay. We need, we always need the horizontal component and the vertical component to express a force into its vector vector form because you can see that a vector uh, we have defined already unit vectors along x direction and y direction that is the reason we need force components in x direction and in y direction okay so what i'll be doing is we can write f bar that is the vector force force as vector is equal to fx into i cap plus fy into j cap that is multiplying the magnitude of the force in the horizontal uh, or the magnitude of the horizontal component of the force by this unit vector along x and multiplying magnitude of the vertical component of force into unit vector along y. So this becomes a vector in x direction, this becomes a vector in y direction. This is a vector representation of any force and if you need the magnitude of this force vector, then what you have to do is you have to take f is equal to summation of uh, under root of fx square plus fy square. So uh, it is under root of the your x term square plus y term square. Okay. This is your magnitude of force. So in parallelogram law, of forces we have learned this long long time back we can see uh, that uh, these are two concurrent forces f1 and f2 and we can form a parallelogram from them and the line joining the diagonal is your resultant so this resultant according to parallelogram law is under root of f1 square plus f2 square plus 2 f1 f2 cos theta right this is your resultant so we can see that it is a very huge formula, but in vector terms, in uh, in your vector uh, calculation, it becomes very easy. So we can see how. But before that, we need to convert these forces into its vector forms. And to convert forces into their vector forms, as I told you, we need one horizontal component and a vertical component of the force. So for this F1, let us say F1x is the horizontal component f2x is the horizontal component of f2 similarly we have f1y as vertical component of f1 and f2y as vertical component of f2 so we have got both horizontal and vertical components of both the forces now we can represent them into vector vector forms so f1 bar or force 1 f1 as vector is equal to f1x i cap plus f1y j cap f2 bar is f2 x i cap plus f2 y j cap <coughs> okay and this resultant can is simply given by vector addition of these two vector forces so if you simply add them up you are going to get your resultant and by adding them up i mean that you have to add their x components so you will get let's say fx and you have to add their y components you will get fy 
So this R will be equal to fx i cap plus fy j cap. Now this is the summation of all the horizontal components. This is summation of all vertical components. Right? So this is your representation of resultant in terms of vector. And if I want the magnitude of my resultant, I just simply have to take under root of fx square plus fy square. That's it. You will get the resultant. So instead of going this uh, with this huge formula, we can have a vector approach and we can find the magnitude of resultant. Now see one common mistake that some students do. Actually they should not do it but still what happens is like if I give this as 10 Newton, F1 is 10 Newton, F2 is 20 Newton. They see this R is equal to F1 plus F2 so they write R is 10 plus 20 which is 30 Newtons. This is wrong. Okay, You cannot do this. You cannot simply add the magnitudes of two forces. You have to first represent that force into its vector quantity or, in, or into its vector representation and then you have to take the uh, you have to add them basically right <coughs> okay now how we can apply this vector uh, approach to several forces so let us say we have f1 f2 f3 f4 as several forces i first have to uh, represent these forces into their vector forms so f1 bar is f1 x i cap plus f1 y j cap similarly we have f2 bar f3 bar and f4 bar the resultant of all these forces will be simply the addition of all these vector terms so r is f1 bar plus f2 bar plus f3 bar plus f4 bar which is equal to fx i cap plus fy j cap where fx is summation of all the horizontal components fy is summation of all the vertical components okay and then the magnitude we can always get it as under root of fx square plus fy square right now one more thing that we have here is R we uh, we need to have the direction of this R that is at what angle it is inclined so we can have those directions as uh, alpha x or alpha y alpha x is the angle of inclination of your resultant with x axis alpha y is the uh, angle of uh, inclination of your resultant with the y axis okay now in 2d case it does not make sense to have both because if you find alpha x you can definitely find alpha y it is just 90 minus alpha x that's it so you find alpha y but as i already told you that we will be learning both 2d case as well as a 3d case therefore in 3d case what happens you are dealing with three axes three axes and three angles alpha x alpha y and alpha z also so these are three angles and in three dimensional case what happens that if you even if you find one angle alpha x that is the inclination of resultant with the x axis you cannot find the other two angles alpha y and alpha z you have to uh, like on basis of one angle you cannot find those two you compulsorily have to find them separately so the way how we find them is this fx we know fy we know and r we know right we can see from in this diagram that fx is r cos alpha x and fy is r cos alpha y so from these two equations we can find alpha x and alpha y and alpha x and alpha y are called as direction cosines direction because they are giving the direction of the resultant cosines because they have this cos term associated with it okay so this is how we can find alpha x and alpha y now finding these two there is an important identity about alpha x and alpha y that we can see here cos square alpha x plus cos square alpha y is equal to 1 okay this is a very important identity similarly in three dimensional case we can say that cos square alpha x plus uh, 
cos square alpha y plus cos square alpha z is equal to 1. Okay. So, uh, how to prove this that it is equal to 1? So, cos square alpha x plus alpha y I can write it as 90 minus alpha x. Correct. And we can see that uh, this is cos a minus b the whole square. So, cos 90 cos alpha x plus sin 90 sin alpha x the whole square. This Let's say this is a and this is b. So, it is cos a minus b the whole square. Right. Cos 90 is 0. So, this term is eliminated sine 90 is 1 so at the end I get cos square alpha x plus sine square alpha x and this is cos square theta plus sine square theta which is equal to 1 so hence we can prove that cos square alpha x plus cos square alpha y is equal to 1 okay so this is an important uh, identity about direction cosine similarly we can say that alpha x square plus alpha y square plus alpha z square is equal to 1 okay where it can be used for example i know two angles i can find this third angle alpha z yes if i know resultant and uh, i know two angles alpha x and alpha y can i find the other three components of the re resultant Yes, we can find. We can we can find the alpha z first, and then we can say that f x is r cos alpha x, f y is r cos alpha y, and f z is r cos alpha z. So from that we can also find it the three components of resultant. Okay. And now we'll be learning or we'll be seeing how to um, find the vector representation of a force when two points are given and the coordinates are given so let us say that we have two points whose coordinates we know x1 y1 and x2 y2 and from these two points our force is passing okay then how to represent this force into its vector terms we need to understand first that to represent a force into its vector term we need the horizontal component and the vertical component so what we can say is that we can take the horizontal component of these two points x2 minus x1 is the horizontal term between these two points and y2 minus y1 is the vertical term between these two points so I can write f bar is equal to x2 minus x1 i cap plus y2 minus y1 j cap right but actually this formula that we have written it is not representing your entire force but it is representing the vector representation of this much line not your force not your entire force it is only representing the vector form of between these two points but our force is actually larger or your force can even be smaller right your force can be either smaller than this diagonal or it can be even larger than the diagonal so this is not the correct expression we have to scale it up or basically if this is your vector representation of this diagonal right what i can do is i can multiply the length of this diagonal by a magnification factor such that it becomes equal to f all right so we need to multiply this by a magnification factor and what is this magnification factor like if you multiply magnification factor and your diagonal length it will give you f and how do we get the length of this diagonal using Pythagoras theorem so m into under root of x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square it has to give you f this is the horizontal term this is the vertical term so by Pythagoras theorem this is your diagonal length so what I can say from this equation I can find m which is equal to f upon under root of x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square yes 
now I will put this m into this equation so f bar will be equal to f into x2 minus x1 i cap plus y2 minus y1 j cap upon under root of x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square okay and this term which is there this you can say as a diagonal or as a vector a unit vector in the direction of force so like you can you can assume this term to be a unit vector in the direction of force and when you multiply it by the magnitude of the force you will get the force vector okay but this is how we need to proceed when the direction of the force is given in the form of coordinates so that's it for this lecture in the next lecture we'll be solving a numerical till then take care thank you